Um, at this point, we're going to start moving forward with our third series of floor exercise with Dan Palladino and Wendy Barukowitz. Um, Dan uh, obtained his Bachelor of Science in ex Exercise Physiology from Frostburg, um, where he did um, compete in lacrosse throughout his college career. Um, he does have a mis mission to help guide and help facilitate healthy, long-term, sustainable habits. Uh, which we all want to um, have in our lives. Um, he believes building skills, crucial behaviors, and consistent practices um, to help clients learn and execute any ha habit and help people understand how to consciously choose healthier behaviors that meet their needs. So welcome, Dan. Um, thank you very much for being part of Dysautonomia International's uh, virtual wellness programs. And I'd like to turn it over to Wendy, um, who is Wendy Brukowitz, who is a, um, a member of the Patient Advisory Board for Dysautonomia International. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, sure. Dan. Thanks, Kirsten. Hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, quickly before we start, um, Dan, are there some things that people need to have with us today before we start? Um, towel would be good. If we still have those soup cans, that'll be awesome. If there's um, a chair near us, that'll be great. Um, and if if anyone has resistance bands, um, I don't expect anyone to have them, but... Um, if anyone has a band, some type of band. And if, it, if you don't, that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna modify. Yeah, that's good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Kirsten, I just see Dan full screen right now. Is that the way it should look? <laughs> Sorry, um, I pinned, I thought I pinned your video. Yeah, I have you pinned. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me try again. Oh, Spotlight. I am sorry. Now I did. <laughs> okay. Sorry, sorry. It's Spotlight video. I apologize. Oh, no, wait. that's totally fine. Okay. Um, thank you so much all for joining. And whether you've been a part of the other two series or whether you're new joining us today, that's great. We're so happy that you are here. Uh, just a little bit about me. Um, as, as Kirsten said, I've been a part of the dysautonomia um, um, member, sorry, <laughs> member support group and the patient advisory, advisory board. And I was diagnosed with POTS nine years ago. And since then, exercise has been a major part of helping me with my, you know, recovery to, to better health. And I met Dan a few years ago and he's been absolutely instrumental for me in helping me to um, you know, be able to function better, you know, during the day um, and live a semi, you know, quote unquote, as normal life as, as I can. So with that, um, we're going to start two things I just want to mention is just make sure you have some water or something sort of hydration with you. And if we are going too fast at all, please just, you know, comment in the chat. And if you have questions, please put them in the chat. And Kirsten has, in the past, has done such a good job of helping us kind of sort through those questions. Either we will answer them if it during the actual exercise, or we're going to hold those off until the end, depending on what your question is, if it's specific to the exercise we're doing. Most of these exercises are going to be on the floor, flat. There are exception of two different two exercises. One is going to be a wall sit, which we did do last series. But if you can't do the wall sit, that's completely fine. If you can just do it for five seconds, 10 seconds, you know, meet your body where it's at, whatever feels okay for you. And the other exercise we're going to be doing is an extended one-legged lunge, but it's not going to go all the way down. So you're not going to get this like really up, up, up and down. And if for some reason you can't do that one, that's completely fine too. Even if you just do, you know, one or two, that's fine. Whatever you can do. Um, is great. And if you just want to sit out of that one, that's completely fine too. As we go through, um, Dan and I will be showing you some modifications, some that are a little easier and some that are a little bit um, harder, just depending on where, where you're at. But we're just here to support everyone. So whenever you want to get started, Dan. Yeah. Um, so some of these movements will be picked up. Um, they're going to be a little bit harder than the first uh, class we did. So um, if, if you're just hopping in now, I would, I would just observe this session. Um, do what you can and then go back to that first session and work through those exercises, go through the second, get comfortable with those, and then go to these. Right. Um, and Dan, it's Kirsten. Sorry, I want to jump right in. Mm -hmm. uh, one question so far, and I think, Wendy, you touched base with it, about it, but I want to make sure um, these exercises can be done um, laying on a bed versus the floor, except for the two um, that you pointed out, out Wendy. Yeah. 
Yeah, you, you could do it on a bed. You could you could do the the bridge on the bed. Um, it's gonna be more ideal on the floor though. Um, if you are in a bed, it's okay. Just do whatever you can do. Just exactly. you know, just tell people do whatever you can. Doing something is better than doing nothing. So even you know, we are gonna show you some modifications to help you through it. Okay. Ready? Uh, so so we're going to start with the breathing, uh, what we did with last session. Um, so we're going to go with one hand on our belly, one hand on our chest. This is the one way that we could kick in our uh, rest and digest system, our parasympathetic nervous system. So it's going to influence our breathing through some controlled belly breathing. So not letting our chest rise and just breathing through that bottom hand. We're going to inhale through our nose, exhale through, exhale through our mouth here. So the goal here should be about four second inhales, five second exhales. And as we're starting to exhale, imagine yourself breathing through a straw. So you're gonna to start to brace all the muscles of the core, the breathing muscles of the core. And this is gonna to apply to all the strength movements. So once you get about five diaphragm breaths, we're gonna to start to incorporate the chest. So we'll do two seconds through the belly <clears throat> and then two seconds through the chest. And we do about five, six second exhale here. Breathing through a straw, starting to brace the core as you exhale, continually brace it uh, once all the air is out here. And this is just gonna be how you activate the core a little bit more. Um, so as you're doing a plank or some other exercise, as you're exerting, you're gonna exhale you're gonna brace your core with this. This is just gonna um, help with core engagement. Awesome, okay. So once you get a few breaths like that, you should just... Uh, so we're gonna go through our mobility. We, we did three of these exercises last time. So we're gonna start with the first one we did last time, the half kneeling hip flexor. Um, so we're in a 90-90 position with both the legs. And we're working on tucking our pelvis underneath us here. Um, so this is gonna be a stretch in the front of the hip flexor, um, kind of near your thigh. So I want you to imagine tucking your tailbone underneath you. Um, try not to lean into this one too much. Um, if you need a mat under your knee, um, a pillow under your knee. All the stretching, if you do uh, about eight to 10 reps, hold that position for uh, one to three seconds and go to about a six or a seven out of 10 of RPE. Um, that'll be a great tempo. Awesome. So you can see how it's really just through the hips, not leaning forward into it too much. You'll feel a stretch like this. It's also a little bit of glute activation, uh, brace, brace the hip as you drive through. All right, so we're gonna to go to the 90-90 mobility next. Um, so with this one, when you're sitting up, you're gonna square the front knee up to the wall ahead of you and the, the opposite knee to the wall side of you. The toes are nice and straight in line with the shins. Um, you're gonna get nice and tall in line with your thigh. Try to maintain that height and uh, reach the chest towards the knee with this one. So with this one, try not to round down. You really want to reach the rib. She didn't, oh, exactly. <laughs> so with this, we're still doing the same breathing. We're exhaling as we go into these positions to relax. Inhale and as we come up. With this one, it's going to be a stretch on the outer right hip, the outer right glute a little bit.
That's pretty good. So you're just gonna switch the knees up. You're gonna square that front knee up to the wall ahead of you, other knee to the wall beside you. Nice and tall in line with the thigh. Absolutely well. Hey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so let's do that overhead reach. Um, oh, so next. Sorry, if you could please continue to cue breathing with each movement, that would be great. I forget to breathe. Absolutely. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> when he says it, I'm like, oh yeah, I have to breathe. <laughs> the breathing, like, will really if if you could get your breathing down, it's just it's really going to help. Um, facilitate your movement. So if you're inhaling as you uh, relax, exhaling as you exert, you could just work through that tempo as, as you're breathing, let that control your movement. So just focus on your breathing to start and it'll, it'll eventually become more natural. And he'll walk us through it. <laughs> uh, so next one we're gonna do is called a uh, supine overhead reach. So we're gonna lay on our back on our mat, um, our feet planted. And we're gonna go for an overhead reach with this one. Uh, so Wendy's showing us how she presses her lower back into the floor a little bit. You don't want um, to so do that. And I exactly. So just comes down, sir, and breathe in, and then exhale as you reach back. And if you can't touch the back surface where you are, like if you can only get to here, that's fine. That's totally fine. So breathe in. Exhale. Again, it's okay if you can't touch back. There are days where I can't get back either. It just depends on your day, as you know. Yeah, so she's going to press her lower back in. Exhale, she uh, relaxes into that final position or exerts into that final position. Sorry. Um, and yeah, focus on your lower back. Only go to the point where you maintain that. Um, so you're keeping that neutral spine. And there's going to be a good overhead reach. Yeah, you don't want to be able to drive anything through your, your lower back. Our, our tendency is to arch up, but we want to keep as flat as you can. Exhale as you touch, or just reach back, whatever you can do. It'll be like a little bit easier if you go a little bit wider too with your arms. Yeah. If narrow, it'll be a little bit harder here. Like this, you can just reach your arms wider out if you can't get into this position, it's okay. Awesome. Uh, so let's do that crossover stretch. So the next one we're gonna do is a thoracic rotation one. So I'm starting with my right leg over my left. I'm just gonna twist. So again, you're gonna inhale and then exhale in the twist. So Dan, will you go back to that question after this? Yeah. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Keep going, sorry. Wendy. Like, yes, no problem. So with that last one, um, Oh, sorry. Um, focus on your lower back, um, staying pressed into the floor. So that's going to be just a, a good postural overhead one. Um, a lot of times we don't ever reach overhead, so we're, we're restricting that in that way. Um, so that's going to be a good way, just a good postural exercise to open everyone up. And um, yeah, don't, don't worry about your shoulders too much. Focus on pressing your lower back, keeping your neutral spine, and then you should feel the stretch as you reach. And, and that question was, uh, should we make sure our shoulders remain flat or are we more concerned with simply reaching overhead? And that was the last, not this exercise, Wendy, the last one. No, yeah, okay, got it. And if you want me to show that again, I can. Just say in the chat. Uh, yeah, Amanda, this was from Amanda. She seems, she's got it. She said, thanks. Okay, sure. 
Okay, so I'm just switching sides. So left over yeah. right. Okay. So goal with this one is to work through the mid column of the spine, just thoracic rotation, exhale as we uh, go into this position, inhale as we relax. Once you got about six reps on this one, it's good. Awesome. Um, so, so the first exercise we're going to work on, um, include today is going to be that wall sit. Um, so as we go to the wall, I want to do one last stretch on the wall. Um, I want to do just a pec stretch. Um, so just a good mobility one. You want to do pecs, pecs first, pec stretch first, the wall sit. Um, I just want to show it. I just want to show it. Um, the pec stretch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, um, so, so as we're headed to the wall, um, I would work, I would just do this, this last posture one. Um, this is going to be a good one for a lot of times we're a little too bent over. So, um, so we just need a wall. <laughs> You can see the pack. Can you see it or no? If not, we'll see. Um, maybe, maybe twist. Yeah. Go from your right side. Yeah, that should be good. Uh, tw twist a little bit more. Can we see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're going to put your arm on the wall at about 45 degrees. Um, so bring your hand up a little bit more, Winnie. You're not going to be able to see it in camera, but. Um, so we're just, we're just going to slightly lean into this one and do um, a pec stretch here. So this is going to be a good postural one. Um, this is just going to be the last one I want to include. So just slide your hand up a little bit more for me. Just a little bit more. Right in here. And again, if the standing is too hard, don't worry about it. Just go into a rest position right now. Mm -hmm. And then you would switch sides and do the other side. Exactly. So you would exhale as you go into it and then just hold that position for two to three seconds. It's going to be a great postural one to open it run up. Um, so the first exercise that we wanted to include, um, that's going to be the standing one, uh, will be the wall sit. Um, so we're going to, we're going to go into a quarter squat for this one and work on um, firing the quads and creating stability at the hips and not letting the knees cave in here. Um, focus yeah. on your breathing. Yep, and this is, you can do five seconds, 10 seconds, you can do whatever feels comfortable. This can tend to jack your heart rate a bit, so if you wanna just sit out of this one, that's completely fine for this. So we're about 10 seconds in. Um, so if 10 seconds is enough for you, then you get a question. Yeah, just slightly rotating um, with your hand about 45 degrees up, then you're slightly leaning into it a little bit. Oh, is this this a good so for the, for the pec stretch, are we just slightly rotating our body with the arm hand stable on the wall? Yeah, just, just slightly rotate your body, um, and then you'll feel the stretch come in. Just that slight little tweak. I can show, I can show that again. Um, so again, this could cool. be... You know, if you can get up to 30 seconds, 45, like whatever, wherever your body's at. Exactly. So start slow. Um, don't go for your longest duration on the first rep. You know, um, take your time, build up with this. Um, yeah. And really take your time in between. Um, so this is probably about 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. You get <laughs> um, um, Do you want me to show the wall again to show? Yeah. The turning the body. Yeah, that's it. Um, Just so, so people get it. So your hand's going to be about 45 degrees, so it's going to be slightly above your, yeah, right about there. Um, and then we're going to go, uh, so the inside foot is forward, so you're going to go into a staggered stance. Um, yeah, we're facing that way. 
And you're just gonna twist until you feel the stretch all through here, right through here. So just the same tempo, exhaling as we go into these positions, um, inhaling as we relax, exhaling as we exert into it. And hold that position for two or three seconds. If you do eight to 10 reps, that's great, that's perfect. Um, and then you would switch sides. We're not gonna do a lot of this because this is a standing one. And it's also our arms above our head, which also can make our heart rate go up a little bit. So that might not be the best um, for everybody. Which is fine. <laughs> um, <Bless it. laughs> so so um, we we're gonna pair this one with the front plank. Um, just do a normal front plank here. Um, so we, let's show them the let's show them. Um, yeah, there you go. Don't forget to hydrate. <laughs> Hydrate, um, hydrate, yes. Just regular yeah, plank. Yeah, yeah, just a normal plank. Um, yeah. Or a regular plank. I'm gonna show it two ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so we're gonna show from the knee, uh, a plank from the knee and then a normal plank. Um, so start from the knee, so your point of contact to the floor is gonna be uh, your, your elbows and your knees here. So make sure your elbows or your shoulders are packed, you're not shrugging up towards your neck. Um, your hips aren't popped out too much. You're in a straight line from head, head to your contact point here. Um, and focus on your breathing. This is where you could focus on that exhale, breathing through your straw. Really brace your core, feel all the uh, breathing muscles of the core activate, stabilize. So you want to make sure your back is flat. You don't want to be arched. You don't want to be up. You just want to be neutral, flat. And again, a modification of this, if this is you feel like this might be too easy, you can just go ahead and pop up into a regular plank. If it feels too hard, you can go back down. So I would start with like 10, 20 seconds in this one and just slowly build up. A good goal to work towards is uh, 30, 45, up to a minute. Um, That's so, a, um, exercise because you're horizontal and it's actually a full body. Like you're really exerting all of your muscles in that, in that position. Absolutely. Um, so, so that would be um, you. That would be your lower push and um, and some core. So the next uh, type of exercise we would do is um, an upper push. So uh, we were working through the push up variations a little bit. So um, we're gonna do the push up from the knee um, slash an incline press. Um, so the push up from the knee is gonna be the little bit easier one. Um, so we're gonna do a normal push up. We're gonna we're gonna go in that same um, plank position knee contact point uh, as you're inhaling in this top position you're going to pack your shoulders a little bit so pull your shoulders towards your pocket you're going to feel uh, your back muscles fire a little bit and as you're going down just go really nice slow controlled you're going to get more out of keeping a, a good tempo like that um, you could press out quick but just go down nice and slow really control this movement um, i would start with a few reps slowly start to build up Make sure as you're going through this, you're inhaling, packing at the top, um, not letting the shoulders shrug up into your neck. And if this is too easy, you can pop right into a regular push up, you know, the legs up and just go, you know, come down and do a regular push up. But for this, we're gonna just modify it a bit and do as many as feels okay for you. Um, if it's too great, anything, it's great. And if you're working through with that tempo, um, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a bit harder. Um, you're gonna get you're gonna get more benefit out of it. So it's really controlling the movement and um, so 
So the goal with this is probably, you know, eight to 10, if you can do 12, it's all about just building up. It just takes time. Yeah, and, and focus on your tempo. Don't worry about how many reps you're getting. Just get good quality. Don't worry about the quantity. Um, and you could, and you could also do this on um, on the incline. So you could use a bench, and um, that'll be kind of in between. That would be like you could use a chair or an ottoman, and that would be like this. And then you would go down. But again, if you feel better just being flat on the ground, I get it. <laughs> the ground is my favorite place. <laughs> Do you have a question, Dan? Uh, yeah, there's a few questions. Um, so, this, so some of the stretches, um, make That's sure you're not o overreaching. Um, but some of these strength exercises should, should help create stability. So it should help, um, keep you more engaged and, um, prevent you from hypermobility and overextending these positions. And, and also focusing on your breathing is going to be very important as you're doing, um, like glute bridges that we've done in other, uh, sessions, really brace your core. That's going to be the one thing that's going to stop your hips from overextending. Um, if you're not engaged in your core, your hips can just continually go. So brace with your exhale. Um, that's going to be a big focus point. And um, as you're stretching, just don't overstretch. Um, Thanks, Dan. As the questions come in, if you can say the question, just so the rest of the group can hear the question. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> so that one was about hypermobility. Um, do you want me to do the next two questions, Dan, or you got them? I'll keep going. Um, so, uh, and don't worry about too much about your push-up range. If you could get to where the elbow, to where the elbows reach the sides of your body, so right about here, um, that's question? perfect. Dan, what was the question? Uh, so, if you can't go too far on push-ups, is that okay? Um, yes. That's absolutely okay. Yes. So your goal, your goal would be to get to elbows to the sides of the body. Don't go past that. That would just be your end goal. That's awesome if you can get there. As low as you can go, that feels okay for your body. Um, the goal of this is to not overmax our autonomic nervous system, as we know, because we don't want to be, you know, down in bed, you know, the rest of the day or perhaps the next day. So you know your body best and just do whatever feels comfortable for you. Yeah. And the goal of these is eventually to be able to do two to three sets of all these. We're just showing you one set of each um, for the sake of time. Um, so, so we're going to pair this with um, the kickback and um, slash the leg lock bridge is the option. So, so this next one is going to be a quadruped kickback. We showed this in the first one. Um, so we're going to go in, into an all, all four position. Uh, so your hands are under shoulders, knees are under your hips, toes are tucked towards the shins. Uh, we're going to work on a, a arch. Yeah, so, you want to use so, when, back. so when you're showing the neutral spine, so make sure you're nice and neutral, you're not too arched, you're not uh, rounded, just in between. Um, and with this one, you're going to work on sticking the footprint on the wall behind you. So try not to shift into your opposite hip too much. Brace your core with this one. Exhale as you go. This is going to be a good core one, a good um, hip stability one, and glute activation one. And again, I always show this one too. If this feels like it's too easy, you can throw your arm into it. Dan tells me this is more about like a balance, but you can throw your opposite arm into it too. Um, but this just helps engage more. If you feel like you can do this, that's fine too. And we switch. This 
throw your arm into it. That was a great point in the comment. Um, just like as you're going to positions, not fully locking out and, and really controlling where you end, making sure that you, um, you're you engaged through your muscles, not, not kind of just um, disengaging and letting yourself just staying tight. This can be very important. And this is following up on, I'd suggest for some to do mini movements, not extending the full range. Awesome. So that's going to be a good core one, a good hip stability one. Um, so we're going to show another option uh, on the other side. So the leg lock bridge. So you could flip over for this one. Um, this would be on your back. So we showed a bunch of the other uh, double leg glute, glute bridge variations and um, a few of the single. So today we're going to work um, on a, a leg lock bridge. So we're going to go into a double leg position. We're going to hug one knee towards the chest. Um, and we're going to work on a single leg hip bridge. So this would be um, your first way to work into the single leg progressions. Um, I would just do the double if this is your first time, you know. Um, if it's your first time, so you tuck and then you can just bridge up with both legs on the ground. This is a little bit easier than than the one I'm about to show you. But feel free to you know do this too. I do this one all the time. Yep, so rolling your pelvis, getting a neutral spine, racing the core, exhaling, going to that top position. And this is gonna be yes. This is gonna be one where the, the hypermobility comes in. So if you're not bracing your core, you can overextend in this one and round uh, arch your lower back. So really brace, stay engaged. If this feels too easy and you want to you know, get a little more harder. This one is a little bit harder, but you just, as Dan said, you have one knee and then you just pop up. So this would be something that you could work towards. You don't have to do this right now, but um, just something to keep in mind of once you are comfortable in that double leg, um, this is something that you could keep in mind to work to. If you're still doing double leg, that's fine. You can keep going. If you're doing the single, just grab the other knee and pop up. Goal with these is eight to 10, and if you can do 12, that's great too. But again, anything is great. Yeah, with this one, it's gonna be a little bit tough to punch to a full height and get straight um, from, from head to knee. So um, just focus on getting good quality reps, relax in between, relax your hips in between, really brace as you go, brace your core as you exhale. Yeah, once you're once you're comfortable with the double leg glute bridges, then I would move on to this one. Okay, so uh, now we got to get an upper pull in. Um, <clears throat> so we got to work our mid and upper back a little bit. Just it's a great thing for posture too. Um, so if you have bands, that's going to make this a lot easier. Um, Bands give you access to a lot of different pull motions. Um, so Wendy has just a, a normal band that she knotted here. Um, so we're gonna work on doing a band pull apart from the floor. Um, so we're gonna go just feet planted on the floor, laying on our back here. Um, and we're, we're gonna work on just a normal band pull apart. I would I would brace the glutes as you drive to that top position. Uh, so the question was, are we are we squeezing glutes at the top top of the bridge or top of the range? Um, I would I would start to 
start to activate with your with your core um, drive your hips activate your glutes and then lock that top position in so you're gonna you're gonna brace your glutes and your core at the same time be stable for a good one second and then you can relax and the breathing is really going to come into that one with your um, with the core so with this one we're exhaling as we pull I'm inhaling as we relax <clears throat> and this is another good one where you could work uh, just try not to shrug up into your neck so you could slightly pack before you pull a little bit um, so pulling your shoulder towards your pockets so packing is just like keeping your shoulders down mm -hmm. and pulling so it's just going to keep you um, in a more stronger, stable position, preventing your shoulders from getting injured. So if you could focus on that as you're pulling, squeeze through your mid and upper back, try and feel this through there. Um, and if they don't have a band, can they use the suitcase? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, if you don't have bands, you can just use regular suitcase. Just go out and up and keep your back flat, not arched flat. Inhale, exhale. Can we show them on the ottoman? What? Can we show them the one on the ottoman? The facing down one? Yeah. Yeah. if you don't have a band this is another alternative that you can do we showed this one last time too you stand at the corner of an ottoman or a bench whatever you have and you're just going to lay flat on it and you're just going to bring your arms out in out so you can do that same reverse fly um just now you're going to have a little bit more range. You could go towards the floor. You could relax for a second. Um, so the goal with this one is to reach the arms to the sides of the body. Stop once you're there and just squeeze for one to three seconds through your mid and upper back. Goal is to feel it through there. Close to your arms too much. Um, try not to shrug up towards the neck on this one. Um, this going to be a great one for posture too. So you could use soup cans for this one. If you have dumbbells, awesome. Textbooks will be a little bit heavier. Um, water bottles. If you experience if your body is shaking at all during any of these exercises, that is completely normal. That is just your central nervous system reacting to the movements. So that's very normal. Just take your time between, you know. Um, so, so the last one we want to do in the series was going to be the towel leg curl. So, um, if you if you're near near a carpet, um, this one will be good uh, there. If you if you're on um, a wood floor, if you have towels, that would be great. Um, so we're going to do a towel a towel leg curl here. Um, we're going to show you two options to do. Sorry about all the movement. <laughs> I just want to be able to show you. Awesome. So we're just going to go onto our back for this one. Um, so this is going to be a little bit more of a, a hamstring exercise. Um, so the first one we're going to do is just a, a leg curl. So you're just going to reach the feet forward. Um, and curl, curl the feet towards the hips. Um, so we're just gonna go to this position. If you're doing this on a rug, you're gonna have more resistance. So I would drag your feet, try and feel your hamstrings fire. Um, you're not gonna have much resistance on the wood. Um, so this is just gonna be the leg curl, uh, towel leg curl. 
So the next option to add to it is going to be the glue bridge with it. Um, so as you're doing that leg curl, you're going to go to the glue bridge. Um, so really brace your core in that top position, make sure we're not overextending again. So she's curling the feet um, towards the hips, pretty much getting set in her glute bridge, double leg glute bridge position, and then going from there. Um, as you get better at these, once you work through those two progressions, you could start to do it a little bit more simultaneous, um, start to bring the hips up as you um, curl, curl the, the, uh, the feet in. So this will just be another progression just to add your hamstrings in a little bit. Um, if you're on the carpet, you could literally just be dragging against resistance and you're gonna be firing your hamstrings. Um, that would be a good way to just work in the movement. Goal with this one, um, eight to 12 reps, 10 to 12 would be awesome. Um, bracing that top position, holding it for a solid one second. So that would have been a full body routine if you made it through those movements. Um, that's awesome. You know, you're going to get a stimulus around all the areas of the body that you really need. Um, we're going to, we're just going to show two, two last core, core movements. Um, And, and be sure to, uh, this is the time if, if in between this is um, to list your questions in the chat room. We have a few minutes um, with Dan and Wendy. Um, so if you have any questions, make sure you type them in the chat. Please do. Um, so we're just gonna show a side plank again, a normal side plank. Uh, we'll show it from the knee and then um, from the feet. This is gonna be a great one. Um, So how often would you do this workout? Um, you could you could do this workout two or three days a week and that would be awesome. Um, if, if you could build up to two or three days of strength training with your body weight and some bands, that would be perfect. Um, you could, you know, keep your off day routine with walking. That's usually what Wendy does. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's um, I was told very early on um, from one of the best posh doctors, <laughs> around that, you know, I asked him what was the number one thing that helped people, you know, recover or just significantly improve. And he told me that exercise was the number one thing. And I understand that some people might be in a position where they can't, um, but it's like, this is a marathon, not a sprint. You know, when I first started exercising, it was like one lap in the pool, that's all I could do. And one minute on a treadmill. So it just takes time. Um, and as I always say, you know, you listen to your body, you know your body best than anybody, and you know what's going to work best for you. So I work with Dan three days a week on strength training and conditioning. And then on my off days, I always walk for at least, you know, 30 to 40 minutes, sometimes an hour. But it took me a long time to build up to that. But I will tell you that I have significantly improved almost living, you know, pretty much almost a normal life since then. But I understand everybody has to go at their own pace. And everybody has, you know, different things that they have to manage. And I completely understand that as I live that life as well. Uh, the next question, are these exercises available as a list with pictures and cues available on a website or by email? Uh, that might I be a question for me, but go ahead, Excel, Dan. I have an Excel doc that I could um, make sure that we get out to everyone. Um, Thanks, it, Dan. It has each of the levels, so it'll be kind of very similar to each of the classes you could follow along with. If you send that to me, um, I will make sure to email that out to um, registrants. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Um, um, so we're, we're gonna show just the last series and that is um, a plank, side plank. And there's two different ways you can do this. Um, one, the first way is to lay down on your side and tuck your feet back. And then from there, 
just gonna make sure you're squared like straight. You don't want to be back or tilted. You just want to be straight up. Just bring your bring your knees back a little bit more for me. Yeah. Okay. okay. And up. So make sure your hips are forward, not back, but up. And just hold it there and breathe. This is another good one where you could uh, prevent yourself from shrugging into the neck. Keep your shoulders stacked, your hips stacked, you're long from head to toe. Your hips are nice and forward here. Focus on your breathing, brace the side of your core. Try and create and some support. Too easy. You can go into a regular, you know, you know, regular side side plank like this. And just hop up, hips forward. But if this feels too hard, it's so fine. You can do this. Yeah, so I would, I would start with from the knee, build your tempo up, start with 15 seconds. If that's tolerable, build up to 20, 25, 30. Um, if you could do 30, you could you could start to build up to that next one. Um, and then switch sides. Tip short a little bit. And you can keep a timer there with you. I'm always asking Dan to show me the time. <laughs> um, and, you know, just regulate how it feels for you. Yeah, and really just go according to your body. Once, once you feel um, you're un unstable or breathing a little bit too heavily, you can pop out, you know. There's no need to. Well, if your body or your arm or anything is shaking at this point, that's completely normal. As I said, it's just your central nervous system reacting, and that's okay. That's normal. Um, so for the last one, we're going to show the dead bug. Um, so we're going to show the normal leg reach again, um, just the, the hands by the side, side of the body. Um, so with this one, your knees are at 90-90, the toes are curled up towards the shins, and we're, we're going to work on pressing lower back in and reaching the foot towards the floor. Um, Don't feel you have like, to go all the way down either. Like if you can just go to here, that's fine. You just want to keep your back pressed down. But again, don't feel like you have to go all the way down. Yeah, if you keep your if you keep your back locked down and go about a foot, a foot and a half, um, the foot above the ground, that's a great distance. Like it's an awesome wrap there. Just go to the point where you maintain your lower back. You get the most out of it. This is one where we could start to uh, add a few variations too. Um, we could press against the opposite hip. Um, so just create some stability against the opposite hip. So you would put your opposite hand on your opposite knee and press. So just locking your lower back in, preventing that opposite hip from moving. This just makes it a little more challenging. You'll feel it more in your core. And then you can switch sides, do other leg. So it's opposite hand, opposite leg. You could also get a, a ball and put it in between your hands. Um, and that'll just make you engage a little bit more. Kind of put it on the palm of your, palm of your hand and then right on your kneecap. This side. Yeah, so without grasping it too much, just put it on like the palm of your hand, and then we're just going to have to engage through the core to maintain this. Um, so this is going to allow you to engage the core a little bit more without adding um, weight or, you know, too many objects. So if you could do eight to 10 reps, keeping your back locked in the whole way. That's awesome. Awesome. 
making sure that we're exhale as we go into this position. This is going to be one where focusing on your breathing, really exhale as you go. It's going to allow you to engage your core. A lot of people like to hold their air in and think that will engage a little bit more. Brace as you exhale. It's going to allow you to fire all the breathing muscles in unison. Awesome. Yeah, so, so that's, a, that's a full body um, routine. So if, if, you, if you work through that routine a few days a week, it's going to um, allow you to get a great stimulus um, and pretty much hit all the areas of the body that yeah. we, we, need, we need to. And rest as much as you need to in between each set. You know, there are days where I need a little more rest than other days. Sometimes I can just plow right through it. It just depends on the day, as you know. Every day is different. Thank you both very, very much. Um, does anyone have any questions for Dan or Wendy at this time? Great opportunity to get um, advice from, from either or both of them. I'm always going to give my tip about my leggings. Because oh, that's right. <laughs> that always seems to be a popular one when I'm talking to people about thoughts is that people I get it. You don't want to wear these like tight compression hose, these medical grade compression hose. I always tell people this, that you can wear regular leggings like this, anything that, you know, looks cute or you like, and just size a down a size or two. And that gives you the same kind of compression, not as much as medical grade, but you're still going to get the, the compression and you want to make sure that they're high waisted, that they come up above um, your belly button because the cooling does start from the middle of your stomach all the way down to your legs. You want to make sure that this is really, really compressed. If you can't find leggings that are tight enough around the stomach, you can always use a, you know, some sort of, uh, or some sort of compression, um, like, you know, Kim Kardashian, she's like the queen of compression. So you know, she has her skin line. So you could always wear that, that as well. But again, never forget the core because, um, the more we build up our core muscles and our major muscle groups in our legs, the less hard our body's going to have to work to keep the blood up to our heart and our head where it belongs. So always focus from here down. Obviously, you know, arms and everything are important as well as full body, but um, the, the core muscles in our legs and our stomach are really key. Well, there's two, two comments, and I have to go with the first one that I am asking the same thing, Heather. Um, I was going to ask you about the cool stripes. What are those? Oh, Wendy. these? Yes, they're awesome. Oh, thanks. So the, um, <laughs> a friend of mine, um, like one of my really good friends, she, don't laugh, please, but these are from a website called Bombshell Girl. <laughs> <laughs> they come in all different colors, you know, hot pink and whatever. But um, so sometimes people think, like in the winter, they think I'm wearing like leg warmers, but they're actually just one, one legging. But they're super but that whole legging is that's what sorry Dan yeah. <laughs> sorry sorry Dan <laughs> yeah, it's be part of this oh, it does like the fashion guru I have to say like he's got some good stuff going on <laughs> um yeah this is one like this is all one one piece it's all oh my god I love it and I'm it's like, called bombshell bombshell so if you go to bomb bombshell.com <laughs> a lot of good bodies on bombshell.com but um, <laughs> these tend to run um like slightly looser material so definitely size down like two sizes if you can um to make them nice and snug and, and compressed some some more comments about how much they love those um i do oh, <laughs> oh some more um <laughs> So I just, oh, I lost the one up top. So um, well, someone just, no question, wanted to thank us and let us know that, um, oh, there it is. She wanted to say, Renee said, uh, huge thank you. Uh, these sessions have been invaluable and I am so appreciative to all who are involved. And, uh -huh. I, and I echo that sentiment. It's just been, it's, it's been a wonderful, wonderful three series and, and maybe we can talk uh, Dan and Wendy coming back later in the summer to do this again for us because I do see these virtual wellness classes as being something that we should continue to offer to uh, the dysautonomia patient community. For sure. Absolutely. I am going to show um, my screen real quick so I can do a slide for Dan. I won't be able to see the chat. So if Dan or Wendy, if you can jump into the chat, I still don't know how to do that yet. So let me go ahead and share my slide. 
So if everyone can take a quick look at, oh, sorry, Dan. I still haven't been able to do this very well for you. There we go. It's not the greatest, but there. Okay, so thank you so much, Dan and Wendy, for your help today. Um, for anyone that wants contact information on Dan, I've shown you his website, his email, his Facebook, his Instagram. Um, you are more than welcome to reach out to him directly. Um, we did record this uh, wellness class today. It will be um, uploaded onto our Vimeo and our YouTube pages along with the other two series. Um, as Dan mentioned, this was the third series, so it was a little bit more advanced. If you want to go back and start from the beginning, anyone that was new today, we highly encourage you to do that and to follow each of these series um, in consecutive order and to keep it up. You know, we, we, we realize how important exercise is, um, as Wendy mentioned, and uh, this is a good resource for you. Um, and don't hesitate to reach out to, to me, Kirsten Slowy at Dysautonomy International, if you have any questions or need help finding the, these resources. Yeah, I, I totally, thank you so much, Kirsten, and to Dan. I mean, Dan really understands POTS a lot and does come from and train and, um, other POTS uh, people as well. He really um, almost has his PhD in POTS right now, <laughs> working with people in POTS, so he really gets it. So feel free to reach out to him if you need motivation or you need help. I'm the type of person that needs motivation to be able to do this um, every day. <laughs> So thank you everybody so much um, for joining us. And thank you. Yep. Thank you everyone. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Uh, best to everyone. Thanks. Thank you everyone. Bye. Thanks, Dan. Bye. Bye.